looking to remove the uh, clutch from the uh, AC compressor. So there's uh, the radiator fan uh, came out. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, power steering pulley came out. The uh, alternator came out, and now that's uh, compressor there. So uh, we. Uh, there is a tool available, but I just built myself from a, a thick plate, metal plate, three screws. I think it's M5 or 25, and they are screwed in there. And there is a center, center bolt that I kept in there. You don't see it. It's the pulley bolt in the middle. And uh, as you can see, I'm pretty advanced. Uh, there is already a good gap. This is the gap. Uh, from the uh, clutch it means the clutch uh, is coming out I already uh, turned it a little bit the, the screws you will see the popping sound when the uh, pulley is moving out I'll try to film it more. you hear that again it takes some time to uh, screw the whatever I have screws or bolts but I expect it shortly to pop out the pulley. So it's not so hard, but it takes a little bit of time. You can hear it as the gap is increasing. done and also you may try to pray pray uh, on this with a screwdriver not too much just a little bit to help but uh, probably it's more or less done uh, just don't go too deep with the screws because uh, they may hit on the uh, pull itself. Now the clutch plate is removed and now depends what you need to do. Uh, you either need to reduce the gap to the clutch plate, you don't need to do anything further, but if you need to remove and replace the bearing for from the pulley, actually the bearing, bearing goes bad pretty much at the same time as the gap goes bad gap of the plate, clutch plate. So probably you just take the moment and uh, re uh, replace the bearing when you replace the shims to get the proper gap. Um, to remove the bearing, you need to remove this clip. It's pretty strong. And then this is the bearing cover or uh, the bearing uh, shield. And uh, you need to use a pulley put a pulley on the uh, uh, pulley, uh, puller on the pulley, yep. and then you just remove the pulley and then the bearing is inside the pulley. Uh, what I actually did, because I didn't have a uh, bearing and uh, I didn't want to mess with removing the whole pulley, get a puller and stuff, I just removed this, this cover, you just get a small uh, screwdriver you know the the ones that you repair uh, tiny watches or something like this a flat screwdriver and can pop up the black cover after you remove the circlip so you need to remove the circlip first and then you can pop up the, uh, the cover here and uh, with the other method you just clean inside the bearing um, a race uh, and the balls you clean it re really well then you just pack it with grease, you just need to push the grease inside with something and then put the, the cover back and uh, the spring, the circle is back. So now it's, it was really noisy before, now you see it doesn't even turn freely, so it's been cleaned very well, dried up and uh, I use actually a water jet and uh, acetone and stuff to clean it and dry it properly and uh, 
uh, put some uh, real good bearing grease, bearing, uh, bearing grease in there, so it really doesn't make any more noise. So I'm gonna just put the clip back, and now you are done with the with the bearing from the pulley. And uh, now this is let me just stop this camera. So that's the clutch. You may want to get, give it a little clean. Uh, previously, I used a uh, the bread uh, clip stuff, you know. So now I'm removing it, and inside this, you will find these tiny shims. There are three of them, and uh, every one it's a different size, different thickness actually. There's a very thin, uh, thin one, a thicker one, and a middle one. So you may want to before removing the clutch you may want to measure the gap here to see how much you need to remove from the gap and then you choose the right shim in this case i think i will remove only the thicker shim and put the two smaller one thinner one back on there so uh, that's pretty much it i think and uh, just the uh, final uh, Final suggestion. Uh, there's another thing that goes bad with this, and that's the uh, temperature sensor from the evaporator. What that does is that you will see the line, the AC line all over the engine bay got freeze, like covered with uh, ice and stuff. So uh, that's the uh, sensor going bad. And uh, just showing you the bolts that you need to remove to get the uh, condenser out of there. There's one there, there's a second one there, and then there are the two lower, uh, what is that name, whatever name is, uh, the two upper bolts there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. They. Uh, there's another bolt for the this stuff here. I forgot to just have a uh, alternator. That's it. There's another bolt for the alternator somewhere there. So you need to remove all those three to get the alternator out. You need to loosen those two to remove the alternator as well. And uh, these two guys here are pretty much stuck in. Uh, Rust is not exactly easy to remove. And then you need to bring the alternator out. Uh, the best stuff, the best thing is to remove the uh, upper radiator hose. I actually managed to pass the alternator through this hole without removing any hose, but it's definitely tight. Definitely, definitely tight. I think I went with the pulley up like this, but I don't remember exactly. So, uh, it's not exactly a hard job, but it takes time. That's for sure. Good luck. Okay, so uh, I just hammered it back in the plate, the clutch plate. And as uh, sure you can see it, the gap is too small, actually. Uh, it's not exactly obvious in the image but I believe it's too small and I will just be I will remove it back and uh, probably I will uh, put back the thicker shim and uh, just remove the two others I will see what it goes how it goes so I left only the thicker shim inside and removed the two uh, less thin ones so let's hammer this back in place and see how it goes. This makes more sense to me. The gap that's in there. You may want to measure this. Uh, 
I don't have the exact numbers, just know by feeling. And it sounds good for me. But uh, each case is different, so you may want to check which shims you want to remove. And um, I had quite a hard time removing the uh, clutch for the second time. Um, I think it's because I uh, I put grease on the on the place where the clutch slides in. Perhaps is a better idea not to put grease on it. Good. This is how I got the alternator. Uh, well, you can either remove it, put it back, uh, without disconnecting any holes, either the power stand or the radiator coolant. So uh, it's rather tight but uh, it works so you just see how far I push the uh, the pump and then I go this way the support the bracket here goes like that the pulley it's upwards past the bracket press a little bit on the on the uh, color hose here, careful not to break it, and it goes not much more than that, and it got in there. Now just, uh, I guess you fit it with the bracket in the right position. It should be more like that. Uh, just like this, I think. And there you go. It's better because uh, you don't have to drain any coolant or disconnect the power steering pump and make a mess in there. And in order to remove the alternator, you first uh, need to remove the bolts. One, two, the third one. And also, uh, you will need to loosen the two bolts uh, down below that connect the compressor, the AC compressor. Uh, just loosen them, but careful because you see the bolts are really long and the lower one are really rusted and stuck there. Just loose, loosen the two bolts there and only then you will be able to slide upwards the alternator because the alternator gets into a groove some some sort of a groove here you see this uh, space here the bracket of the alternator goes in there like that much like such and you need to loosen the two lower bolts on the AC compressor in order to lift upwards the alternator otherwise it won't lift upwards you just loosen those two lower lower bolts and then you will be able to lift move towards the alternator and remove it from its place so, uh, using a puller it's a two uh, two arm puller uh, basic stuff about for 20 bucks as you can see probably the place, the space, it's pretty tight in here. I lifted up a little bit the uh, compressor, but uh, yeah, I just have enough place. I removed also my uh, housing for the CRM. And uh, so at this point, you don't remember this guy goes, uh, that's the pulley with the bearing inside, still the, uh, still the old one. So we got this circuit there. Don't forget to remove it. And uh, yeah, so I grabbed the pulley. And it's kind of tight in there, but yeah, you can still uh, work around. To hang, I guess. So I did grab the pulley on the lip like that. On both sides, careful not to go too far. You won't be able to anyway not to go too far because the pulley ends there on both sides and uh, actually compared to the uh, to the clutch plate which is here 
That's the clutch plate the inside the part, uh, the, uh, um, the side towards the compressor, which goes in there like that. This guy is pretty much more stuck in there, actually. The, the pulley with the bearing inside, I'm gonna punch out this bearing and place a new one. Um, this was pretty much uh, not so tight in there, so I got it. If I believe. I believe you may even be able to punch it out with a small hammer instead of a puller, but you never know the difference from a car to car, right? So uh, it's not too bad of a job. Okay, so the bearing from the pulley. Um, remember, this guy went like there. And uh, it was pretty hard to remove. I punch it, I have a... This is piping. I punch in there, but no, uh, no way with a hammer. Rather with this, it's a pretty big stone, right? So I've tried once gently, no, didn't work, and then I was more convincing and get the sucker out of there. And there isn't, you can see, there's rust, so that's why it's very possibly a little bit uh, stuck in there. So be convincing. <laughs> Because the clutch is so uh, hard to remove and uh, you may want to remove it more than once when you adjust the shim uh, gap. So uh, I just send it like this, this portion, the first portion of the inner circle here. You don't need it to be so, so tight. Just remove a little bit. Only one thing is just don't remove too much so it doesn't wobble. But as long as secure there without the wobbling it's fine. a few words about the bearing uh, when you are you will have to put the bearing inside the, the the pulley and then the pulley with the bearing inside the shaft of the compressor so when you put first the bearing you'll be um, pushing back into the pulley so put it on the pulley and kick on the sides never kick on the inner race right kick on the sides a few times on one side, a few times the other side. It will take uh, perhaps five minutes, but you'll get it in. And then you get the pulley with the bearing, and you want to press it back into the shaft of the compressor, right? So the shaft will be sliding against the inner race. So again, you want to, instead of tapping on the pulley itself, you want to tap on the inner race, so you don't create shear force between the two races because the bearing actually is not meant to resist side forces like this. Always the bearings resist only uh, perpendicular forces like that, so no side forces. So, so when you press the pulley with the bearing inside back onto the shaft, uh, compressor shaft, try to kick only on this place. It's not easy, maybe you need to find an adapter or something. Don't, at any point, don't crush the seal. So try to kick only there. Don't. I should strongly suggest not kicking on the on the pulley surface. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing, removing the uh, clutch. I think it's the hardest part of it because it's pretty stuck in there. I suggested to just to green a little bit inside so it gets easier. But even then to fabricate if you need to fabricate this plate get a stronger metal mine it's bent and you don't want to guess the the three uh, holes on the metal plate try with a plastic plate first guess the, get the pop bolts right on the plastic plate then put a plastic plate on a metal plate and get your bolt uh, your holes on the pl metal plate at that point and for the screws, uh, you absolutely need stainless steel screws because they are more strong metal. Uh, there is a lot of force on them. Try not to use screws actually, try to put bolts. I don't know the size, probably I put it in the description. Get bolts instead of screws. The screw dive is really hard to fit in there and you see the results. So uh, a hex head would be 10, 10 times easier to work with. Get some longer screws, these are really tiny, just uh, happen to hand of my garage probably at least one inch long screws and uh, that's not the good one let's see if I got it you will need to work 
you can see actually the metal plate is pressing against the center bolt of the clutch. Uh, you won't be able to use the original center bolt because it's too short. So I used this, but I suggest getting a longer one, maybe one and a half inch. And you have to screw it in the center. The plate will press against this one, guys. So get the strong guy, a stainless steel bolt. And uh, you may have to play a little bit with uh, tightening and tightening him. Depends how the how the plate, uh, the clutch plate is removed or not. And uh, there was one last thing. Okay, yeah. Well, at the end, you will have those the three screws in this plate. Right? It seems like the clutch is coming out. Well, don't pull on it. Remove first your plate. And then don't forget to unscrew this one guy in the center, right? Then you get to remove the plate, the clutch plate. If uh, later on you need to readjust the, the shims, so uh, let's say you put the shims, uh, the wrong shim, shims back in place, you need to reduce or increase the gap. Uh, actually, you don't need to do anything, just remove the uh, serpentine belt, free the belt, get it out from there, remove the bolts to the uh, uh, compressor the two upper two lower bolts and then you can toss the compressor uh, backwards uh, to the left side of the car I put a, a small uh, uh, piece of wood to support it and you have right away access to remove the bolt and uh, pull up the clutch plate <clears throat> the clutch plate again so it's pretty easy you don't have to remove anything else the pump power steering pump is in place alternator is in place everything is in place just the sympathy belt is on place uh, the space is tight so um, you won't be able to use a screwdriver so uh, in this case I have even five uh, bolts with hex head so I'm putting the a actually a fifth five on 16 uh, socket um, imperial socket and uh, well the clutch is coming out pretty pretty easily because uh, I, sh I did the uh, green a little bit inside before placing back and uh, but in, even though um, you you will take time because you don't have really much much place to turn the ratchet actually so you do very little by little but I prefer much instead of uh, removing all the the hardware uh, above the uh, the compressor okay so two minutes later the uh, clutch plate it's pulling out pretty I think it's already uh, loose I just need to remove the bolts and remove the center bolt uh, just to mention this is not the way you will be removing the pulley itself because you cannot place a puller in there uh, if you want to kick it sideways but the space is not enough to to bring a hammer there and I don't suggest you kick it out so you probably need to remove all the hardware above if you want to get to the pulley itself the hardest part actually is to get the bolts back in place, get a compressor back in its bracket and uh, start the bolts. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because you can't see the holes where the, go the bolts go through, but uh, just try again and again. Try to align the pulleys and see how it goes. I think um, these are the long bolts. Uh, there's. Uh... Well, actually, there's four of them on the compressor uh, and the alternator is sharing two of these. There's another one on the side of the alternator, the third one. Um, these are M8 bolts. As you can see, this one, it's about five inch long. The one inside of alternator is about three inch long. Um, interesting, uh, the dealer doesn't sell them. And those are bolts from uh, quite a few other brands. I think four, then quite a few other brands from the alternator brackets. But you won't find them at the dealer unless you are much luckier than I was. Uh, but better order a few, two or three of them in advance from eBay if you can find them, <clears throat> or some online store, hardware store here in North America. Don't don't keep them um it's not a bad idea i stretched one i broke another one the, the two lower one on the compressor are really rusted here on the shaft and be very careful with them uh because if you snap 
if you snap them uh, closer to the engine block, it's not that bad. But if you snap it here, you won't be able to remove the compressor from there. And you are really, really stuck in there with the compressor in place. So careful, really careful. Mine were very, very rusted here. I, I was lucky not to snap them when removing them. So the two lower uh, compressor because of the, you know, all the mode and the salt and the stuff. What's lower in the engine, it gets more salt. So careful with them and perhaps order in advance if you feel like you forced on them, replace them right away. Don't just don't take a chance to snap them in there. M8 again, it's an M8 for the um, clutch plate. You need three M5, get the longest one. You can find those M5 in hardware stores and the middle one to the clutch plate again but the, the one you need to remove the clutch plate you need the longer longer one than the one it's originally there it's an m6 so get the longest one again one of uh, that m6 for the center bolt uh, final final thing um, once you remove the pulley with the old bearing aside take a picture of both sides of the the pulley to see how far the bearing goes into the pulley so especially uh, I think towards the compressor take a picture and see how far how deep the bearing goes inside the pulley uh, I think I pushed mine to the end to the bottom of the pulley and I think that's too far now I'm not going to change it because the pulley kind of kind of touches to the compressor side so here the noise it makes and that's not between the pulley and the clutch plate is between the pulley and the, the part of the compressor where the pulley is sitting so snap a picture before remo removing punching out of old bearing and uh, that will give you probably a good idea how much to push it because i think the bearing doesn't have to go right to the end of the uh, to the bottom of the pulley probably i'm just guessing it's the face of the bearing on the compressor side is just matching the face of the pulley but you will see you will be you could be able to push even further more the bearing but i make sure make sure uh, you got it right i don't think it has to go to the bottom of the pulley i'm now about to place the serpentine back, belt back on uh, you can get the routing from uh, just Google up and check the images. Uh, what I want to say is I'm using a uh, extendable ratchet which will absolutely save your day when doing this thing, uh, either removing or putting back the belt. Just a small ratchet, just you probably will be able to do it, but you will understand what what's the meaning of using a long one on this so look how far i have to to bend it it's on the at this moment i'm near the reservoir here so you need to get it to touch almost to touch the front member of the car and at this moment you should be able to really easily slide the belt over the uh, the power steering pulley 